One of the things you've probably been reading about in farm magazines already this winter or this late fall is rootworm resistance all over the country. We wanted to talk about that today and what you can do on your farm to stop rootworms. Well, you know, Brent, when these biotech traits come, a lot of guys think, hey, I'm planting a trait, my work is done. And you know what? It is not done. A biotech trait is just a tool, and I don't care which biotech trait it is. You look at any of the single source resistant traits, none of them are going to do a good enough job on rootworms when you've got heavy pressure and also if you've got just one single trait in there you've got so much higher chance of having resistance develop it's crazy it's just irresponsible to just do that and think that's going to cover everything that i'm going to have okay i just want to tell you a couple of personal stories that we have right in our area back a couple of years ago three years ago now we found the first rootworms that we knew of that were resistant to the VT3 trait, to that rootworm trait, that very first rootworm trait, and it was some corn in the very same section that I live in that fell flat, and it was two different varieties, and they came out and actually did genetics tests, so we did find the corn, yes, it did have rootworm resistance, or it was supposed to, it had that trait, and we had the exact same, one of those two numbers, we had the exact same corn, just kitty corner from this guy's field, same number, but we had a half rate of insecticide down, and our corn was standing great, yielded in excess of 200 bushels. And for this particular farmer, I don't know what his final yield was. It was 130 or 150 bushels, something like that. It was just a tremendous loss. And I'm not kidding you when I say the corn was flat. There were no roots left by the time those rootworms got done feeding. Now granted, in our area, we have heavy rootworm pressure because we've been raising a lot of continuous corn. The neighbors have been raising a lot of continuous corn. So we have that to deal with right in our area here. Well, you know, when we're in an area where there are ethanol plants and there's feed demand for the corn, you know, and people want to raise corn here, we need it in our area. And yes, you get into these things where, hey, I've got some continuous corn on part or all of my farm you know you're going to have some issues when you're raising that same crop over and over again. You have to use more than one thing to manage it. It's just like when we talk about weed control. Everyone always asks me, what's the best thing to control this weed? And most of the time I've got an answer, but that answer comes around, well you start with this and then you come back with this. And it's the same thing with rootworms. The problem with them though is they are below the ground. So you can't spray something over the top later that's going to do a very good job controlling those rootworms underneath. You have to deal with this at planting time and with the management of your whole system. Okay, so coming back to this whole rootworm resistance thing, you look at this VT3, Darren, and so people start saying, well, it's a disaster. We shouldn't plant VT3 anywhere. And oh, Monsanto, they're taking advantage of us because this uh, stuff doesn't work it's, anymore. It's not just I, VT3, it's well, Herculex, it's, yeah, it's AgriSure, it's all the single source rootworm traits. Yes, but here's what I come back to. 99% of the time, this stuff works, all right? We just have a pocket here where there's such tremendously heavy rootworm pressure. And for whatever reason, there got to be some rootworms that developed resistance. Okay, so now this thing has spread out a little bit, and here's story number two for this. So here we are back, you know, a couple of years later, and we've been telling people, yep, make sure you're putting insecticide down, or make sure you're going to smart stack so you have two different real worm traits, but not a lot of guys are doing that yet. So there was one farmer that, as a matter of fact, just called me this morning, and he's like, look, I don't mean to complain too much, but you guys really need to be telling more people they need to completely get away from VT3. And I said, John, look, it's not that bad. It's just on your farm and right in our area here, yes, we've got a problem. Here's what we would suggest you do. This last year, he used some fortress insecticide. And I just said, I'd probably use a little different insecticide. I might use a force or an Aztec, something like that, that's a little better on rootworms. And then instead of just using VT3, I'd switch over to Smart Stacks. Smart Stacks works fine, yields great, there's no problem, but now you've got two traits and you've got insecticide. So, I mean, right now, all he had was insecticide that's uh, it's not the best, it's okay, but it's not the greatest. And he had just one rootworm trait. Well here, I'm not trying to hit any of these rootworm traits and say they're a bad trait or anything like that. But if you've got one rootworm trait, you've got a good chance there's gonna be some resistance coming in the next few years. If you have two rootworm traits, like a smart stacks, that's much better. There is no known resistance to smart stacks, but even so, those rootworms have to take a bite out of the root, even right. on a smart stacks hybrid, in order to ingest that protein that they can't digest and ultimately they die. So you have to protect. I think even on a smart stacks hybrid, it's a very responsible choice to put some insecticide okay, with so it. Okay, so what rate? Just be safe. All right. What okay, rate? well, here's the thing. If you've got a problem in your area or if you're doing continuous corn, use a full rate of insecticide. It's not that expensive, especially if we've got corn around so $5. So you're telling me to plant smart stacks and spend the money there and to use a full rate of insecticide? Why not? 
Well, look at smart sex. Money, Darren. Yeah, but look so. at smart sex. It's not just below ground protection. We're also talking about earworms yep. and things that are going to attack you above ground. Corn borers, everything. That's fantastic. And you say, well, okay, I've got one part of this that I don't really like. I don't like that there's some rootworm resistance to single traits in my area. So what? Spend 10 or even $15 on insecticide. Okay, it's not so, that big a deal. Well, I'll just tell you, on our own farm, actually probably on your ground even, Darren, all we did this last year is maybe a third rate of insecticide, maybe half at the I, most. I put, put on put more. Smart I put on did more. You? Yeah, I, I did. And I, did. Didn't, I didn't have smart <laughs> stacks, though. I had a single oh, yeah, trait. Okay, that's right. I had a single rootworm trait, and I put insecticide on yeah. my corn, and yeah, it cost money, and yeah, I didn't like paying that bill, but you know what? I like having corn that stands, and my corn did a nice job this year other than that we had some hail yep. and So all problems. I'm saying is at this point in our area, if you're using VT3 or refuge corn, we're using full rate insecticide. It, yes, it costs a little bit of money, but you're only talking maybe three bushels of corn. Okay, it comes back fast. I mean, our average on our farm in the last few years is 190 bushel corn, and it should be more once we do a better job with insects and managing all these things. But the other side of this deal is, it's just like when we talk about soybean cyst nematodes. I got a real simple solution for soybean cyst nematodes. Don't plant soybean beans. I got a real simple solution for corn rootworms. Don't plant corn. Well, tough luck, Brian. I want to <laughs> plant some corn. The key thing, though, is just don't hear all these reports and, and be disheartened that, oh man, I'm not going to be able to raise corn. You absolutely are. There aren't corn rootworms that are resistant to the insecticides that we can put on at planting time. Well, once again, corn rootworms have gotten to be a worse problem the last few years because we're seeing some resistance. We're seeing more corn acres planted, so there's just higher pressure than what we used to have. So simply plant some smart stacks. You have two different rootworm traits. Use higher rates of insecticide and then rotate away from corn worst case scenario and you can solve a lot of these issues. One other issue that you'd like to solve is weed control. We'll help you with our weed of the week coming up next.